Hello everyone, this is John from OptionsMeister.com and today I want to cover executing and managing the double ratio trade. Let me start off by kind of explaining to you what the double ratio trade is. Now simply stated, the double ratio trade is nothing more than a put ratio and a call ratio on the same underlying in the same expiry. Now typically the ratios are one by two, but they can be any ratio of long options to short options. I typically am short two, long one. At Options Meister, the double ratio strategy is frequently used for earnings trades, but suitable for normal 45 days to expiration trades. Now the ratio spread or the double ratio spread for earnings strategy is most often used on low and mid price stocks. It is a neutral strategy when you're using the double ratio trade. It's frequently utilized in lieu of the short strangle. I actually call it a strangle on steroids because if the price stays within your uh, expected move of the strangle, which we'll uh, explore, explore here, uh, you and you get a kicker from either the put side or the call side. And we'll talk about that a little bit. So it is a combination of a really of a put debit spread and a calls debit spread and a short strangle. So you've got a put, a put debit spread on the downside, a call debit spread on the upside, and a short strangle. Now it has a lower risk and a lower re, uh, reward than the short strangle, but it has a higher probability of profit. And you'll see those numbers come to light as we go through the explanation. Now I do want to note on higher priced or more volatile stocks, Teslas, the Amazons of the world, etc., we look to add a long option further out of the money, either creating a butterfly or, in most cases, a broken wing butterfly. Let's talk about how to structure the double ratio trade. First of all, we're going to assume a neutral bias because we're going to be on the call side and the put side, not unlike a strangle. We want to determine the expected move of the stock for the expiry in which the trade is being executed. Obviously, if we're doing an earnings trade, it may be for the front week, it may be for the uh, regular front month. In most cases, at least in our world, we're going to be selling two short puts and two short calls at the expected move. And then we're going to buy one long put and one long call one or more strikes closer to the money. And you'll see that as we illustrate it on the chart. Now at Options Meister, the minimum width of the spread is a dollar. And what I mean by that, the difference between the long put and the short put, the long call and the short call, it, the minimum that I want to use is a dollar. And I always want to execute these for a credit. The most recent example that we did uh, in the private group is on Twitter. Uh, it was uh, an earnings trade that we placed on February 5th, 2020. Now you can see uh, the chart I'm showing you is actually the closing price of the day. These trades we typically like to execute the last hour of the day. The closing price on Twitter was $33.39. If you don't look at the two bars to the right and see what happened post earnings, you say, well, this is kind of in the middle. It really sets up for a neutral strategy, a strangle, a straddle, or in the case that we're going to explain today, a double ratio. Now let's talk about the double ratio and how it was executed prior to uh, the end of the business day, uh, the market close on the 5th. So you can see the, if you look to, the, to your right over here, I'll show you the cursor, you'll see 342 and then up here in the market maker move 336 they're so about 330 340 350 is the expected move so what i'd like to do in structuring these is i will obviously on the put side subtract that so if i take 342 we're about at 30 dollars and if i add 342 we're at what 3770 so we'll just round or i'm sorry 3670 we'll round up to 37 dollars so our short strikes are going to be 37 strike and the 30. Now we could simply do a strangle at those numbers, the expected move. Uh, the delta you can see is 19, the delta here was 21, so it's uh, basically a delta neutral trade. Uh, we would have collected uh, uh, say 50 cents on the 30 on the call side, 45 cents on the put side, so 95 cents with uh, just uh, three days to go. 
Okay, now this is how I structured the trade the, uh, and the premium we collected. So the double ratio trade that we placed on February the 5th, 2020, we had a dollar wide put spread. We had the 3130 put spread. We had the, a dollar wide call spread, the 3637 call spread. And then we added a 3730 strangle. So that can give you the picture that you've got a put spread and a call spread on either side of where price is middled, and then you add the 37 extra, uh, the 3730 extra strangle. So you're short two options on the put side, short two options on the call side. And if you look on the Tastyworks platform that I most often use, uh, you'll see that for this trade I collected $48 in net pre in premium. Uh, less $6.87 in commission. And here are the legs. We bought a 36 call. We sold two 37s. We bought a 31 put, sold two 30s. And here's a little uh, snapshot of the trade and how it uh, lines up. And in this other square, you'll just see another uh, rendering of uh, what the trade looks like, the 2112. So hopefully that gives you a clear understanding of what the trade is and how it's structured. With this double ratio, uh, the trade was filled for a 48 cent credit. Now what are the potential outcomes? And this is something you need to think about before you enter any trade, be it a double ratio, a strangle, or whatever. You need to know what are the potential outcomes. So in this case, price could say inside the expected move, which it's expected to do 70% of the time, plus or minus. It could pin at either the short strikes, either the short uh, 30 put or the short 37 call, which would be the best scenario for us. But uh, and the other option or that could happen is it could just breach either the short strikes, blow through the 30 short put, blow through the 37 uh, short call. So that kind of sets the stage for what the potential outcomes are. Here's a chart of the trade, but it is, as you can see, we show that the closing price was $33.39. Now what I've highlighted on this slide in the blue rectangle is the price post earnings uh, the next morning after the earnings announcement, after the markets open. You can see that we had a gap up, very wide bar, especially for something with an expected move of just a couple of dollars and a large wing at the top. Now this chart is at the end of the day so uh, you can see where the high was of the day the low was and it finished kind of above the middle so um, you would think we're in deep trouble i mean this thing is penetrated blown through our our long strike our short strike the 37 on the top side and uh, we are in a losing trade now here's the way that i managed the trade I mean, you could certainly close this trade out, and I will show you that, and take a loss. But this is the way I chose to manage the trade. You can see the open here at 36.53. Uh, we had a high and a low. Now, the, the if you recall, there's two of these 30 short puts, one of the 31s. I immediately closed one of the short, one of the two short 30 puts. In my case, for two cents two bucks. So uh, you might say that's a total waste of money. Why'd you do that? So we're going to go down there. It's, you're throwing two, you're throwing two dollars away. I prefer to eliminate risk on one side or the other. I've been doing this long enough that I know stranger things can happen. And what you expect might happen uh, or expect doesn't happen does happen. So uh, just to be precautionary, I take one of the 30s. You could, of course, take both of them off. I take one of the 30s off. Now I've got a free put spread, a 31 by 30. You can see that uh, the price on these short calls has jumped up all the way to 156. So we're going to go through where we are in this trade. Twitter, as you can see, it moved outside as expected move. So I ask, what's a trader to do? Now, the one thing you could do naturally is to puke the trade out. I hate to be so gross, but that's one thing you could do is just uh, close the trade. And if you close the trade, you would probably uh, buy back the 237 short calls for $1.56 each, and then you would sell the long 36 call for $2.40. 
and it's going to be plus or minus a buck or two if you close it out that way. <clears throat> That's going to cost you $72 to do that. You collected 48 so you take a $24 loss and you move on. And that might be the way that you prefer to trade them, and it's perfectly fine. I would tell you to be, if you're going to manage them in that factor, to be consistent all the time. Now, in this case, there were no bids on the put side. So you couldn't exit the, the put uh, the, uh, for any. How do I manage them? How does Options Money start manage these things? Well, immediately I closed the $30 put, one of the 30 puts, as I explained to you previously. That eliminates all the downside risk in the trade. And I've got a free dollar-wide put debit spread. In case something bizarre happens, it blows down there and blows through the 30, I pick up 100 bucks on a lottery ticket. The other thing I do is I offer the 36, 37 call debit spread for a 95 cent credit. Now, granted, you're going to say, why don't you do it for a dollar? It's intrinsically worth a dollar. But we're uh, a day before uh, expiration, and I want to get out of this thing. I, I know that if I can get 95 cents this day, I'll give up five bucks. I'll take my chances that it'll either be lower than this tomorrow, it might be higher than this, but... I'll give the market maker five bucks if he'll exercise and it. It stood there for a while, and you'll see in the trade uh, detail uh, how long it took to close. And then I, as soon as I get executed, if I get executed on that call debit spread at 95 cents, I roll that extra 37 call out. And again, after that call spread is filled, there's no point in doing it until that call spread is filled. Now, I'll typically roll that extra call out one week to take a look. I want to see if this move, in this case, way outside the expected move is real or not real. And if I roll it out, I'm going to roll it for a credit or zero. So I can't roll it out to the next week and do it for zero or a small credit. Um, I'll roll it out two weeks. But I like that short range. Uh, in a case like this, when you had a couple of dollar expected move, it jumps up five dollars or six dollars. Um, I want to see if that is if those prices are going to hold. Let me go over this slide and kind of show you where uh, where we are after the f initial trade management. Uh, the red arrow indicates that I bought back the 30 put for $2. The two green arrows indicate the call spread that I sold. Now you can see that happened at 11.28. So what was that uh, two hours after the market opened? Uh, the price was continuing to be strong and um, they filled it up. Uh, trade at $95. $330 credit less uh, $235 debits, $95. <laughs> then as soon as that was done, you can see within a minute, I immediately roll out my 37 call. Now it's nothing that you have to do in panic, but I, I just like to get it out of the way. So I roll, was able to roll it out one week and I picked up 17 cents, $247 credit less a 230 debit. So now I've collected uh, a, a total of 17 cents. So at this point, uh, on day two or February 6th, I've collected $158 in credit. I've paid $8.59 in commission. So let's say $9. We've got about $149 in, in net collected premium. Now, again, in managing it um, on Friday, which is when this is being recorded on the 7th, you can, I show you a screenshot here of uh, about 1 o'clock Eastern time where the trade stood. So you can see it's about 75 or 79 to 81 cents. So let's say you can get out of it for 80, 81 cents. And we, we have 150 in collected profit. We can buy this back now for 80 cents. That's $70 profit on that one lot. My targeted profit on something like that would be... <clears throat> Uh, in this case, we collected 48 cents premium for the initial trade. And then I'd like to maybe get, uh, with the dollar wide spread in there, target's about 50 cents. So 98 cents would be great. So I could take this trade off right now, eliminate all my risk, move on down the road, and I have a profitable trade. I want to talk to you a little bit about the trade summary and what we really learn. <clears throat> Trades, and especially tr earnings trades releases, aren't really binary. A lot of people think of them as win or lose. And like I said earlier in the uh, presentation, if you choose to take those off 
uh, as soon as the market settles down shortly after the open. And like in this case, you would take a $24 loss. That's certainly your prerogative. And you may want to do that. But if you do that, I would recommend you do that on earnings plays on a uh, on a consistent basis. And uh, so one time, guess that I'm going to take it off early. The next time I'll not <clears throat> be consistent. And here's a couple of my favorite sayings. Uh, and I put this relative to earnings uh, or trades is, it ain't, it ain't over till it's over. Kushner Gibera said that. And then one of the funniest things, one of my favorite movies of all time, John Belushi in Animal House said, it wasn't over when the Germans attacked Pearl Harbor. And I only put this in there for a little bit of levity, but what? But I really want to tell you that it, it's really not over when the trade moves against you. If you're a probability-based trader, you know what you're going to do in advance. You can certainly accomplish um, perhaps managing this trade at least to a break-even, if not a profit. Now, let me summarize and kind of give you the current position. The total premium collected, as you have seen, is about $158 per each one lot, less about $9 in commission. Now, the current position I'm left with, after all those adjustments, I have a, uh, a free 3130 put spread, which is going to expire worthless today because it's just it's not, the price is not going down there. But more importantly, I have one Feb 14th. As you remember, I rolled that out a week. I've got one 37 call, and currently it's trading for about 75 bucks. So if I take 75 off of what I collected, um, you know, it's 150 less 75 makes 75 dollars on the trade. So not too bad for a trade that a lot of people would have closed at a loss, uh, maybe panicking or otherwise not understanding how to manage trades uh, right after the open. So I'll remind you to know precisely what your trade manager will be before the trade is executed. Always remain mechanical and non-emotional. And remember, the math does not lie. Now, there, are, of course, are exceptions. We know that 70% of the time price is contained, but that gives us the edge. We also have volatility contraction on, in our favor, especially on these real short-term trades. Well, I hope you found some uh, benefit in this uh, short presentation today, and uh, I've got to want to reiterate what we do at Options Meister. Uh, you know, my vision, the vision of Options Meister, is to educate traders and investors on using known probabilities to become consistent, profitable traders. The goal of Option Meister is to show every client that successful trading is a learned skill that can be mechanical and non-emotional. So you don't have to have superb athletic talent to play this game. It's all very mechanical, non-emotional, and relies simply on probabilities. In my mission, the mission of Option Meister is to encourage and convince every trader and investor to become a self-directed manager of their own financial future. Now, if this is something that may interest you, I do have an Options Meister Gold membership, uh, and I will not go through the bullet points here. You certainly can read them, but uh, if you have an interest in, in joining our group, uh, reach out to me. You can uh, use my phone numbers there, Options Meister uh, website. Uh, you can reach me at Skype, John A underscore FLA, or email me, John at OptionsMeister.com. Love to talk to you. I enjoy talking to other traders. Um, no pressure. Uh, if you have some questions, you want to chat about it, uh, just reach out to me. And I will mention, um, we, I do have an Options Meister Options Trading Facebook group. If you use Facebook, I'd encourage you to join that because I'm adding content to that uh, site all the time. Again, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found some benefit. And I want to wish you good luck and great trading.